Okay, so we'll call the uh, special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Roll call outside. Here. Okay, here. This other one here. 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 We have one. <laughs> All regular members of this. Whole business. We have workshop panels, cannabis, and data center text on the pre application. Before we get going, where's Louis? Can you guys hear us okay? They're silent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Pretty well. Can you hear us? Not very well. <laughs> if we if we have trouble hearing anything, I may ask folks to repeat themselves. <clears throat> yep, we're good. No, it's right there. Oh, oh, that one. Sure. So, um, just kind of very quickly. Oh, uh, sorry. So, uh, very quickly, one of the things we did want to just put on everybody's radar is all of this information we've been putting out on Greater Broughton for each one of these subject matters, whether it's short term rentals, cannabis, or the data centers. We've started off with kind of a, a broad, uh, broad view on each one of the topic areas. And we have been compiling some like general survey questions just to get people engaged and involved and try to get some initial feedback on each one of these areas. And then as we get some information, we've been doing a little bit of a deeper dive. So initially we've had some questions out there on short-term rentals. We received a significant amount of responses. Unfortunately, one of the things that was happening was people were voting more than once. Uh, and we substantially more than once. Um, and then what we're doing now is having people enter their username and um, an email address for every time that they're answering some of these quick polling questions. So we're hoping that we can get um, uh, eliminating that uh, duplicate voting uh, type of situation. John, is that what we saw that what you sent to us either yesterday or today with the pie charts and right. uh, things so, like that? So one of them was the quick poll that you see yeah. on Greater Broughton, and that's the one where people could easily vote. You didn't have to register. You that was like 1,600 responses, oh, there you go. Right. Yes. Yes. which but seems... But so clearly that people are polarized. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the other one, the survey questions with the pie charts, those you actually have to register. So those are single people okay. who are, are right. taking that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in that, um, on one of those, I think there was kind of a note about, although there were 1,600, how many, that there are many less, I think it was around half of those were actually unique responses. Um, and it was interesting because first we saw polarization one way, and then we saw our polarization another way, and then it kind of evened out on some of the opinions. So it, it's hard to say um, where people are, but we're, you know people are very interested in the <laughs> In fact, we got a lot of input this later yes. in the day. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so I'd, I'd like to go over the uh, questions that are on this uh, memorandum that we received, starting with the short term rentals. On, you know, there's a copy. I think, I think they may have a PowerPoint that can kind of lead you through it. <laughs> I don't know. We had this. Oh, yeah, that's there. No, but they've got a PowerPoint that focuses folks on that. Yeah, but we want to add some questions. Mm -hmm. And I think we should just start okay. talking about the questions. I mean, we've had an awful lot of input. We need more information to be able to answer the questions that we should raise. Somehow we've got to get to the point of what are feelings. And I think on the short term rentals, the first thing is the definition of what's a short term rental. I assume everybody thinks it's 30 days or less. If that's not so, then we should discuss it. I'm uh, sorry, I went through the presentation, uh, Horsey Wood. I don't even have, I don't have a focus on that document as much as the presentation, but I'll try to find it in the, in the town. Well, there are not very many questions. They came with the agenda pack. 
Yeah, right. I just need to find that. But go ahead. And the first item is in which zoning districts should STRs be allowed? As I think last time we talked and said there may be some areas that we could have STRs without a problem. Right, so as a recap from last month, uh, we went person by person in the uh, PZC and got your confirmation that um, you would at least like to discuss uh, allowing short-term rentals in certain districts uh, under certain conditions. Uh, so that's where we are hoping to start this evening with uh, that first question. Uh, if, if we're all still in agreement with that, uh, then what in which zoning districts uh, would you feel comfortable allowing short-term rentals? I'd like to go around everybody and get their input on it. May not be definite right now, but, but if it is, we can raise it. I'll start with you, Hal. I'll set the purpose of it. It's just easier to go around the table. Oh, okay. In, in, in an organization. And just for me, just the idea of which zones existing zones that we have mm -hmm. don't really address very well where we'd like these to be would it be better to look at it from the opposite side and we want to not have them in certain zones we think of it that way and that's very possible but that would just be well, there would certainly be some zones that maybe they're just completely inappropriate that's probably an easy one mm -hmm. but in terms of any kind of blanket that shouldn't be taken to be the opposite saying well if it's it's okay in a particular residential zone if it's not forbidden in a residential zone then you can't have it our residential zones all kind of butt up against each other and butt up against different roads and in some places if it's on a road that's not part of a neighborhood it might be a perfectly okay place to put something but it's not really a good place to live as part of the neighborhood so i think we need to identify it more closely just what we've got as numerical zones are what doesn't really address it very well. So oh, I, I, I would have trouble, trouble saying residential zones versus non-residential zones, higher density. I don't, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm not quite sure. I no, I do not know exactly how to address it based on density. Some places where it's incredibly dense. Maybe that's a perfectly pla good place to put it. <laughs> um, a, a great thing is where it's in a commercial zone, but we have in a commercial zone. Well, well, sure, why not? So that, some of that's low hanging fruit. You go in an industrial zone, probably not. It would be crazy to put one there. So I don't think we even have to worry about that. So it comes down to which residential zones are we going to hire? <laughs> and that's the part where it gets a little tricky because our maps only show density and each density touches another density and frankly if it's if it's something that's right on route one it's not part of a neighborhood it's in a couple different zones i don't think i'd say in this zone it's okay in that zone it's not okay as soon as you get within the neighborhoods that's a different problem we just heard uh, yesterday or tuesday was one of Rwanda, of all places. That would be me. <coughs> Excuse me, we can't get any input. Of all places, it was blew me away because that's a, a little neighborhood that was originally wrapped around Cutler Element, Cutler Middle School. It's incredibly, it's crazy to have it. Now, if that particular house was one of the houses facing Route 1, we wouldn't have even noticed. Couple extra cars. We want to. We want to regulate it, but would that been a problem for the neighborhood? They wouldn't have known if the backyards faced each other. That would have been a problem. But if it's off by itself uh, along a major road, it's abutting my house. It, it's in my neighborhood, and it's in her neighborhood, and it wouldn't be in either of our neighborhoods, and therefore we wouldn't care. So I don't think it's the it's the particular zone that is the thing that does it. It's much more fine tuned than that. Do you think that we're saying you want a special permit to allow them? I think that's harmless to have a special permit. But then we'd also need to come up with what are 
Well, you're then well, you pretty well, what's the de what's then the you have to do the criteria? Then you have to do the criteria, and the criteria would be along those lines. I suppose we could do it that way, and or draw a map of where it might be considered. You still always have to do a special permit because even if you identify the trunk lines and the streets that would be okay on the corners, that it wouldn't matter because they're not part of the neighborhood, then maybe they're okay. But then it's still a special permit because if their backyards butt up against a neighborhood, then it affects the neighborhood. We don't, we don't want it to affect neighborhoods. <coughs> I, oh, okay. So uh, I guess I have a lot of sort of like, I'm sort of stuck still, but let me see if I can unstick myself. So uh, I, I mean, if we're working with this and, and we did, Sort of agree that we could, uh, you know, that we could possibly allow them with conditions. So, I mean, thirty days seems like a a, a place to make a cutoff to me. I mean, that's that's a, a distinction. I think there's a legal distinction at that number. I know that I checked the Connecticut Department of Motor Vehicle. They require you to change your driver's license after thirty days. To, to be a resident. And so that separates, you know, so there's like a legal precedent for that. And so I would say that's probably a good benchmark to shoot for. Um, as far as where they would go, I think one of my biggest concerns is always on this commission is trying to anticipate the worst thing that can happen when we make decisions like this. And if we pick a neighborhood or a place and say it's okay there, then pretty much consider that place that we pick to be a short-term rental district because it's everybody's gonna that's where they're gonna flock to and then every single house in that place will be a short-term rental almost okay. guaranteed maybe like an over remember you yeah. can also add uh standards for uh density of these uses uh, you can you can say there has to be a certain distance between them you can say that they're uh, can only be so many within a certain geographic area. So that that is an option that's on the table. Um, is that for us to make those decisions? I thought that was a, more of an ordinance. Kind it of is thing. more of an ordinance thing, but I, I so I do want us to think about. I mean, that's the other thing that I mean, we just found out about that the um, the town council is now looking like it's going to pass this ordinance. Uh, so sort of we've got two levels of conversation going on: the things that you can do through zoning and the recommendations you'd like to make to town council to um, update or amend the uh, short-term rental ordinance that they're considering. Uh, so that would be Jeff, among the things that you can you can consider recommending. Sorry, but um, I think that we're sort of talking to ourselves here. There's not a conversation going on because they the town council has decided that they aren't communicating with us or they won't have a conversation with us or even economic development which to me is sort of craziness. And, and I think that from my point of view, then that makes me feel like we need to do every single thing on our own or as much as we possibly can. It makes our job doubly ugly, triply ugly. Right, well, sorry to uh, interrupt you. So please, please continue. Uh, oh, no, I'm not, okay, so anyway, no, I'm glad, go right ahead. I interrupt people all the time and I'm, <laughs> bad for that, but uh, I, I'll try. So a uh, special permit, I think it's probably, you know, absolutely required, but, um, you know, I don't know how, once we open this bag, how we control what falls out of it. I think it's, I think it could potentially become a big mess. And the other thing that I have a concern with, and this might not be one of these questions, is the idea of the uh, legal non-conforming use. Um, I mean, I, I wrote a little statement there. I don't know if I should read it now or later, but I'll, I would do that. Um, another, well, let me, I'm getting mixed up here. So like even, even the definition, because you'd asked about that, Jeff. So the definition to me is, is a tough one. We, we call them short-term rentals, but we don't, I mean, my idea, your, everyone in this room's idea of what a short-term rental is, is different. Uh, there's an article that I have from the New London Day from June 30th, 
from a fella who's got a 15,000 square foot home that has some, he's doing movie productions out of it and tour bus stops. And I mean, he calls his place a short term rental. So like, I don't know. I, how do you define, how do you have a definition for what this thing is? And then tell this person that that they were legal non-conforming, I guess. I don't know what, because they were able to define what they were when they assumed that name. It wasn't, it wasn't defined by us or by the zoning official. Someone went in there and told them what they were, what they were, and then it developed into something else way beyond that's so. why i raise the issue is i think one of the important things to start with is a definition of what is yeah it. but then does if we do define something then does everybody who was calling them themselves this thing before get grandfathered I don't in think we care what they're calling that's what the regulation but calls. but how do you then and you gotta start with the you gotta start somewhere. No, I get it. No, but no, I just not, I, I just have a, I can't, I don't know what because we say that word short-term rental, but what is in my mind is different than in everyone else in this room's mind. Well, I, this one's a little odd because what you're pointing to is that it's an outrageously huge house, but it's a house. And you say there's bus tours and movie production going. Yeah. That's a whole well, different that's a commercial. Yeah, but the thing is, is that it still could be a short term. Right? What stops me as a resident in a residential neighborhood from having shooting movies in my backyard? Well, that's part of what we're saying for home businesses. Well, and that's some of the conflict. Or, or having a wedding, you know? And the thing is, is that if that wedding event is included in the rent, like you just, you know, include everything in the rent, then everything that goes on beyond it is included in the rent. We got to start somewhere. I think you start that and you keep adding to it, and then you get to the end, and then you review it all over again. All right, I just should say, no, I'm serious because I, yeah, okay, you just can't do it everything and just go step one, two, three, four because they're all integrated and they all impact. Doing. All right. I just I, I hesitate to go through all of this process and then throw a wrench in the works when sure. we're all done because yeah, but then it, it needs correction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like today, I mean, we're supposed to have theoretically what you're allowed to do in residential areas for home business. And if that's uh, not clear today, right now, yes. currently. Yeah. But I you know, and, what what is that? And that's well, that may be something that we have to address. Yeah. You know, if it's not clear in the regulations and we find it's not clear, then maybe we have to address that. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't know why. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm still stuck on the legal non conforming aspect of it because they weren't legal and. Um, can I just read this? Okay, our, our POCD, POCD in the land use section distinguishes between residents and big visitors in section 3-3, and it defines commercial uses for lodging in sections 1-19 to include hotel, motel, inn, bed and breakfast, and other lodging uses. That's in our POCD. POCD does not allow commercial uses for lodging in residential areas. Dwellings, which consist of dwelling units, are defined by our zoning regulations as exclusively residential. Transients, stay in hotels or other forms of lodging, as defined by our zoning regulations. So for me, there are three simple questions. Are, this is what we're calling, whatever you're imagining in your head, a short-term rental commercial, I think yes. Are they providing lodging for transient use? I think yes. And is this allowed in a residential district? I think no. And, and, uh, and our planning staff has never told anyone that commercial lodging in a residential neighborhood was allowable. I never said that. I don't know why. I'm stuck. Yeah, but... Oh, okay. Go ahead. Allowed. 
short term rentals or at least in certain zoning areas? Are you saying you should not allow them in residential areas? No, well, I mean, maybe they could be allowed, but it's just how do you <laughs> allow them like legal non conforming when they were never? I mean, unless well, that's a separate. So yes, one thing I, and I hear your frustration, and I knew that this was, as soon as we took this job, that this was going to be a huge sticking point. And again, that's something that our firm cannot, you know, we're not lawyers, uh, we can't, we can't make that determination for you. Um, and we could, we could spend the whole evening debating this point, and it has to be resolved, don't get me wrong. But what I am hoping for from tonight is that we try to do a mind exercise, set that aside for now and say, all right, that aside, what is your ideal outcome? Uh, you know, the, the town council's actions aside, uh, anything else, what would you like to see? Where does this make sense to you? And whether that be by zone, whether it be by an overlay uh, that you might wanna create, uh, whether it be based on performance standards, uh, we wanna try to get a better sense from you all tonight that let's get past the the legal issues and the nonconformity issues. Um, where in an ideal world would you like these things to be allowed, and under what conditions? Uh, so I realize that there are a number of other of these legal issues and the nonconformity issue that must be resolved. I don't think we can resolve them with you, um, and I'm hoping we can at least try to get a step farther in terms of in your ideal world. Where would this be okay? So anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I don't want to hog the whole thing, and I want to hear from everybody. So, uh, did you? No, I just wanted to point out the plan of conservation and development. That those aren't the regulations. No, no, oh no, 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 no. I get it. No, no, I get it. I was just looking for because the thing is, is that truthfully, like our our regulations don't say what residential is. So I was. There's a definition of dwelling in there. Though. Well, there is dwelling and dwelling unit, yep. but it doesn't say what residential is. And I have an idea. I said it. You know, that's where you reside. That's where residents reside. Driver's license, something. You know, um, and in in so then this was the next best place that I could find something that that described you know what we like what my expectations are. Maybe not the letter of the law, but what residential is, what commercial is. And residential doesn't include uh, what, commercial lodging. Well, it's not transit. Commercial. Not transit. Well, it, uh, you, I mean, it's like by our regulations specifically call out like bed and breakfast, right? Yeah. But um, otherwise, it, it, our regulations have to give that That's, that use as permission, otherwise not acceptable, which is why that said I'm stuck again. Here I am. Go on. I want to hear from everybody. But I think there is a conflict between uh, a dwelling unit and the, the use in the dwelling itself, what it is. If you look at the three definitions, I think the three, at least two that are side by side in there, there is a little conflict. It's not very black and white. Was it very? <laughs> well, I mean, especially with what we're talking about. Allowing that in today's regulations. But if we need to have a definition of residence, then we've got to have it. If that's the only way we make the, the regulation understandable. Yeah, but then even that then is uh, leap is uh, grandfather legal not conforming. Even that's if we whole, say what that is, right? That's, that's a whole separate issue. No, I got it. That just it, it makes me think that maybe we don't want to make that. That's why I wish the town council had worked with us because it makes me well, then feel like I have to be. They're not really addressing no. this type of. Issue. No, but it could make our job easier. It could make me feel more comfortable doing what we have to do, which doesn't at this point. But. Well, I think what we're talking about is coming up with a set of regulations, yeah. at least for future. And maybe they are invocable for past time. I think, what is it, Moy? Just said by their regulations, they aren't allowed. And they got most of the places to shut down. Did you have any? No, that's, I, I want to hear from people. Okay. So, 
an act to follow here. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm trying to do I think we just want to get everybody's no, no, opinion just out. And the best thing is getting people to look at it in different directions and right. end up with a better better outcome than just one person determining it. Yeah. 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 And we always have good ideas on this council. Lots of different ideas. And I think it was interesting to me that Hal said um, you don't want to affect like the local neighborhoods. I think after everything, you know, we're sympathetic, I think, and we understand all these things that we've heard. And I think that fits in with what Mike was saying that okay, the POCD is not the regulations, but that should be the blueprint for the regulations. There's a very clear message there that there's residential and then there's commercial. And I think um, I'm not sure how it would work, but I think um, I think we need to start and in order to keep it as simple as possible and what's a very complex problem. And for me, uh, especially given what the zoning regulations say, um, where they do make the distinction between residential and commercial, they do say if things are not specified in here, they're not allowable. And I think we go with legal interpretation for you. Um, and that would clarify the and we start off with this. I'm not saying that's the end point. We start off by saying <clears throat> the status of STRs, um, whatever STRs define that, but it's prohibited. This idea of commercial use and residential zone is not allowed. <clears throat> and that's why I think it's a good place to start to clarify. And then what Hal was talking about other places that in fact we could put in short-term rentals because it would make sense. I mean, it isn't like all of our zones are perfectly laid out or whatever either, as we know. So um, we've heard time and time again, and there's a lot of background on when people buy a house, when they buy into a neighborhood, when they buy into a town or a state. This is a big, this is our biggest decision, usually financial decision. <clears throat> it has to do with whether kids are going to be brought up in schools, the whole thing. It's not you buy into this so we can have the health angels parking on this side and have a big barbecues going with all kinds of uh, you know, foul language that their 12 year olds get to hear on the other side. <clears throat> That's a horrendous situation. We all agree. So I think if we start off by saying, we really need to go over the zone, over the same, to make that distinction. And then we start to say, where is this going to make sense? And I think the benefit of that is, as we come up with different ideas, where maybe we could use short-term rentals. And this is also keeping in mind the hotel industry in this town is big, right? And it has to be impacted by things too. The homeowners in this town are big also. They're impacted by the fact short-term rentals have driven up the price of houses astronomically. It's a hot real estate market, I know, but when houses in my neighborhood go up triple in a few years in the price, um, and your taxes go up, you're starting to bring in the hardship, and the hardship goes throughout the town. The values are changing in taxes. So, I think we need to and keep this all in mind if you start with, okay, this is what regulations say. Now, where can we put these things? And with the help of Horsley Witten, and of course, everybody here always has some good ideas and things. We come up with some concrete examples. <clears throat> I think that would be a good thing. It'd be a good process. Then we can bring, let the public come in, have public hearings, see what makes sense from their point of view, because these are our customers, right? As well as the business community. Try to see where this is going to work. I think the to talk about zones and this, it ends up not being fair to the people in certain zones. It's discriminatory, really. If you're an old in Mystic, well, if you're in downtown Mystic or old Mystic, versus saying up by the ledger, you know, you're uh, impacted quite differently. Things aren't just on Sharon Avenue. Things were in Bel Air. I heard months ago on short term rentals. Yes, in Bel Air. <clears throat> because that isn't that far of a walk, really, for some people. 
And so that it's really, um, it's really affecting the residential neighborhoods where people thought they were getting. So anyway, I think, um, so I think so far, we're fairly well same boat here line what we think should happen. I don't know if that helps or not. Um, that's why I would say, forget the zoning districts. That doesn't make sense. It's the not existing. Yeah. They're saying maybe an overlay district. If it was like Hal was saying, you could do it where it would make sense. Well, how do you determine? Well, the US 1 type thing, uh, commercial type. Um, this is not a simple map here. Oh. <laughs> I haven't well, looked at it. Not the, that's why an overlay doesn't make sense. It might. It very well because might. It, would, it would have to address existing right. boundaries. Well, I don't think we should leave or, anything off the table. No, you know, overlays, no. whatever. I think like an overlay plus having condition. Oh, yeah. You have oh, to yeah, have condition. Have condition. Right. condition. Right. I think you have to have condition. Push it for you. So the overlay doesn't have to be perfect. You can do lots of places and you say, well, I can put there, but only with the conditions. But, but I used to live on Route 1 and it was in a congested area building. Mm -hmm. It really was sort of a building. In fact, like I still talk to the guy who used to live right next to him. There are places there where that will where the hearing bolt will bear that out. A whole lot of it isn't just room one. Room. Room. <laughs> if you talk down by the horse place, maybe that's different. All right. So if zoning, I'll interject a little bit. If zoning is not <clears throat> the way to uh, organize where these should be allowed, let's start thinking about this in terms of performance standards. Um, whether it be the uh, type of street, uh, I mean, you did make some of you mentioned that uh, you know maybe this isn't applicable in the residential zones, but maybe we could say in commercial zones or mixed use zones. Uh, as a general rule, it's it's okay with conditions. Um, but what are the conditions that you think would uh, <clears throat> make for an appropriate location? So you talked about not being in. A plat, not being in a, a you know a subdivision, um, not abutting uh, a, a home in a subdivision. Uh, what other things uh, or performance standards uh, might help guide where it would be appropriate to have these? Well, I, I think we should hear yeah, everybody first we before we get into that. Just have one more because we have Barbara. Good. Yeah, Sue's remarks are very comprehensive. I appreciated them. I think we haven't talked about whether owner occupied will make a difference. And I think that would make a difference. But then you get into the enforcement. That's mm -hmm. condition. Yeah. yeah, that's a condition. In regard to location, you're still overlay. I think overlay is, is sounding attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is um, uh, it's an opportunity, really. There would be so much interest in. You don't want to do one offs, let's say one over here on the east side, one on the west side, one up north. Um, Are you talking about one house? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got one, one special permit, right? We're going to have um, you know, a scattering of special permits. I think that'd be a nightmare to administer. And we'll have parking standards. Oh, you can have eight cars over here, but over here you want to have one too, or you can fit. And the, let alone the police trying to enforce. Well, let's see, was this one with a special permit that we're getting calls about? Or not? And then I think we also have to recognize this does not affect no anchor front one right. point right. in the city right. front. And that's hopefully they're dealing with it their own ways. I know right. no link has prohibited it. Um, right. Apparently that's working. I don't know. I think, too, besides hearing from our customers or residents, um, also the hotel industry hopefully would also have comments on something like an overlay, too, because that would be concentrating more something that might be seen as a competition to something, or at least to give them the opportunity. This is really not competing with hotels. Hotels are two or four rooms at a time, not a house. And I remember actually looking for having a family reunion in the area. This was already five or six years back. It was actually difficult. We actually put people up at the Navy Lodge. Mm -hmm. There was no place to put 20 people. And so that, that's a different competition. That's why people went to Newport, because you could rent whole houses. So now they're coming here to rent the house. I don't I think it's an addition to, I don't think 
are hurting because of short term rentals. Say, I did take a look at all the hotels in town to see if I could get a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, there were rooms all over the place, and I thought the pricing was interesting too. You know, price. Some of the pricing in the hotels is pretty good, but it all, of course, the hotels are very smart in their pricing. But they're building for new ones, right? Yeah, and the one that used to be a gas station is going to be a three story. Yeah. I think we should probably be careful though about um, the appearance of uh, favoring one you one user over another user, kind of, right? Because it's you know not our, you know who who owns the building or isn't our, you know. So if it is a hotel, that's fine, and if we decide short term rentals, that's fine. But we shouldn't be saying that one is. Uh, better than the other or suffering because of this other one. So, but then you would have the opportunity to have the same health and safety standards too. Well, there you go. Rentals, you know, you would have the tax that the hotels have to pay. And now people are doing like some of them. I think it would make a lot easier for a consolidation in the areas that would um, sense. Are, are health and safety standards something that we can? Put into our regulations. Well, it's like having fire no. no, it's just it's not, it's not zoning. I think that does become. I mean, we can say parking, right? But no, we can't. We can't say that you have to have smoke detectors. No. No, I mean, that's why that was covered by uh, the um, short-term rental ordinance that the, the the town council is considering. Special <clears throat> permit, certainly. Uh, well, even that was it. Said a sworn uh, statement. <laughs> Doesn't say that the batteries, you know, it's just that you have to have a. I mean, I mean, not the knock the thing, but it's you know sort of pointless to say you have to have a smoke detector. It doesn't say it has to even have batteries, <laughs> or maybe it does. I don't know what. Just well, working smoke detectors. Anyway, we can't do uh, safety standards. No, it's really parking. Lighting, we could do. Yeah, lighting, parking. Lighting, yeah, it's really. And whether there are events being held there. <laughs> well, but how, how can we do that if you can't, you couldn't tell me that I can't have a birthday party for my kids in, on a Saturday, right? Right, but are you a short term rental? These would be new regulations for specifically for short term rentals. And if it turns over and there's a family who lives there, then it's just the residents as well. Just that's kind of what I'm getting from you guys. Just as today, you can have a, re a wedding in your house or you and your wife, but you can't rent out your house for weddings. That's the business. So, so like what I described before is inaccurate in this circumstance. What I, what I if, if I'm including that my backyard with picnic tables and then rent it to you, I, I can't just say do what you can't have a wedding there. We've had issues before. I don't remember all the details of, I think we actually went to my own court with someone with a, a private house that was renting it out for weddings and events, and we said that was not allowed. But, but if you're but the owner, could, but not it's the commercial, it's the commercial piece, it, it was it, renting it out. Yeah, it seems kind of over and so it's difficult to. What a short term. Yeah, no, I know, but the well, thing is, I mean, it's a commercial transaction versus a residential transaction. It was That's the difference. difficult from an enforcement perspective. Seemed like it would be almost, you know, but, or, or if my but it was liquor closet, it was there, and I say, help yourself while you rent the house. <laughs> Am I running a bar? Why you rent the house? Well, <laughs> I don't know what. It's just part of the package, you know. I mean, if we rent your house, you can have a party. Sure, I don't, I don't, I don't like liquor anyway. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> anyway, I just, I'm, I, I, I think I need to learn more. But well, uh, be wary of the loopholes. Well, that's it. And, that, and then like always these things. Central, so we right. have some good, <laughs> things, good examples there on what not to do because people will. Well, but also the, the more direction you give us, we work with or the way we can start putting something together. And as we bring that draft to you, we, we can make sure we're addressing those loopholes. 
as best as we possibly can within the allowance of what zoning can do. And you know, one of the things if people are leaning towards our, we only want to see this in commercial and mixed use zones, and possibly along uh, you know collector or arterial roads via a special permit. Okay, that's a category. Now we would move on to well, what are the criteria we want to see within that special permit and in those commercial districts. That might be easier to do, to monitor, to enforce, and to structure than an overlay zone. Because where would you want the overlay zone? To be the whole town? Or is it just going to be commercial and mixed use? Yeah, then, then you get into like almost spots of like you're picking a house, right? You're picking, yeah, I've got a picture of it. Little slivers of places actually right. is what I'm thinking of. It. it would be maybe we can come up with it based on what we're thinking. I mean, so, I just mentioned sound like an okay idea. It was actually okay, so we can't put it some anywhere as a basis. Let's just say it's a big put on that one. Like, how far away from commercial away from a commercial zone is it appropriate? We want it in the middle of the town, probably not. It's going to be short term rental. We want them to be able to. Maybe even to walk into, into downtown district or walk into Groton, walk where they're going to go and say that'll that'll be a limiting thing. So maybe <laughs> one mile, a mile and a half, that gets it to Rhonda. <laughs> one mile gets it to my house. And so I'd say maybe one mile is an appropriate distance. And beyond that is now just getting into Bel Air, it's getting into town. And so have these little veins of where it's appropriate, where it's tolerable. And how we come up with that is distance from commercial, and maybe we actually limit that. I think you have some good things in your memo here. Mm. <clears throat> Certainly, the parking and noise reasons, yeah. and the special permit idea. But I think one of the objectives of what we want to do is maintain resident residential areas, probably in these nodes, like. Mystic as, as a downtown, not as a zip code, mm -hmm. but as a downtown area. I think there used to be a, a lot of town spirit there, mm -hmm. a lot of action, a lot of activity mm -hmm. because of that. And if you turn it into all commercial living spaces, then you're like, like living at the seaport on a 24 hour day or open 24 hours a day, but there's no residents. Yeah, no, and no, I don't no. think we want that. And every single house will become this thing unless yeah. you're able to. It just will. And I, I think too we valuable to, a thing to really I, I think we want to maintain these small nodes that we have in town. So like we have on the Moy, the Mystic, the Old Mystic. And they're important to maintain as a way of life. And yeah, it's a quality of life for sure in those areas. And I would think in some of these. <laughs> less dense are uh, districts you can have have uh, short term rentals without any impact on the area you know if you go further out and if you're in a are you 40 area or 80 area i don't think a, a short term rental would even be noticed mm -hmm. but it is in one of say a downtown listed area where you have the houses are all adjacent to and they, they, are, they really are. We've heard that from the public a lot. Yeah, but they really are. When you go uh, with a special permit, what does that, what uh, tools does that give us? I think we would have to identify what the criteria is if you want to do a special permit. Can you limit the number of them or? Other? I'd be kind of. I just have a concern with that because it's not fair. It means the first person in, yeah, as, no, as the one that you can put on that block. Why can't why can't somebody else put a second one? That's what makes it different, especially when we have existing ones today. You know, for, for use and, and then oh, say who gets the right one to do a lottery. I'm not even sure that would be a great thing because I'm talking about one of the examples given was that maybe we could have not too many of them. So we allow one, but then the next one has to be X number of blocks away. That kind of sandwiches residents between 
do a different one to, or start to checkerboard it. I think we probably want to do the opposite. Wherever they are, some in this state, it's already kind of destroyed in some senses and we can't turn the clock back. So we're not gonna be able to fix everything in downtown Mystic. But if somebody's a single residence is sitting right there with a short-term rental on either side, but when you sell the house, it probably should go to a short-term rental because that makes sense. And stop the and damn it. Well, you have to stop. You stop have to stop it. Too. That's good. That's too nice. But I'm saying, like, we're saying stop it at a certain distance, wherever, one, maybe wherever it is. One of those pie charts showed are you adjacent to an existing STR? Yeah. And it was about 50%. I mean, that's all. Okay. If that's accurate, it may not be accurate because you don't know who, who would participate uh, in the surveys. And no matter what we. Based on the. I've just based on the the response is taken as a whole it looks like about half of the people who respond to that survey uh, are short-term rental owners and half are people who live next to short-term rentals and uh were, were objecting to it uh i it's just my interpretation i can't know that for sure but i i think that's probably what you're seeing in that survey yeah oh, that's why i think you have to be careful looking at a survey like that it doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't seem like one of those things that i think that if you had your druthers that you would choose that as your neighbor, well, as you could help it. What's the best for the community? That's what we ought to be looking at. So what's the best? In some cases, town? no matter what, somebody is going to end up next to one of these things because right. it's going to stop someplace. We can't it's either going to be across the street or it's going to be next to them. That's just the nature of the zone. We're going to have some. we are not stopped. So ideally, unless you have none at all, you're right. going to have cases where you're going to. Well, what's the best for the what's the best situation for the town? I don't think we want to convert downtown district into a commercial yeah. district. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be better not to have to deal with all the special permits under the oath. Oh, to yeah. try to well, do I, bigger areas. Yeah. And that would be better because then you wouldn't be doing piecemeal residents with so far. Maybe, maybe you just select certain areas that they're prohibited. Mm -hmm. No, it's a little bit better than that. And then say the other residential areas and have or pick the residential areas and have them or non residential areas. Okay, that they're from the public and they're going to have probably a 50 50 really, That's a tough way to go. Well, I mean, you're, you're going to have some people want them and some don't. Oh, I understand. Hmm? I understand. What, what's the best for the no you know, getting back to that conversation you folks were having about supporting, you know, some of the commercial centers or, or the, you know, areas of focus, which are, of course, are, uh, you know, identified in the POCD, w would it be helpful if, you know, maybe in the interest of time tonight, um, you know, Horsley Witten could map the the walk sheds like to these areas so for example we could map a the area where that contributes a 10 minute walk to downtown mystic as an example and take a look at what that area includes for different districts um, and different types of roads and get a feel for you know what the potential obstacles or concerns would be in those areas if that might be a, a, an area of focus you want to look at. So we're hearing sort of two two bits of feedback. There seems to be a conclusion that uh, says, "Okay, let's try to concentrate uh, where where these are allowed in nodes that are walkable." Uh, and then another perspective that we've heard tonight is, uh, "Let's let's not do that because we don't want those areas, uh, you know, becoming less residential." Uh, and do we? Uh, allow this in the less dense parts of town. Um, so is there any level of consensus about direction on, on those points? I think, I, think, yeah, I think both of those are true, though, is that one is it's that they're, they're kind of two different issues. Where it's less dense might be okay. It has nothing to do with where it's more dense. I think both of those happen at the same time. What we are saying was where it's more dense 
very narrowly defined where it is appropriate. Not in the general area, but you say the, the 10 minute walk. And frankly, I think I'd like to see what's 10 minute, what's 15 minute, what's 20 minutes. Let's actually break it down like that. So we have something to pick from, to see how far out we want to go. And it wouldn't be, as has already been indicated, it wouldn't stretch out into the neighborhoods. We don't want to go into the neighborhoods. We're going to stay closer to the trunk lines and to the corners and to the places where it's not affecting the neighborhoods. Is there any data on whether people in short term rentals arrive by their own transportation, their own car, and those who take the train or fly in? And, and does that have any impact on whether you care whether it's walkable in 10 minutes or whether they're out? Or Route 184 somewhere. I don't know that we can get that data. I don't think that's part of the Air DNA data set, for example. I don't think they track that. Um, but in well, terms well, of. We're, <laughs> we're seeing so many license plates from uh, out of state. Right. And I think you might want to track more than one part or two. You might have some people that do arrive from what, New York or whatever by the train. Yeah. And there might be people that are Connecticut. And people that uh, drive them too. And yes, I just like you said, if you could tell us where you're seeing opportunities, I think that would be really interesting if something mm. pops out. And... I only thought of the pedestrian thing because if mm. we have another problem, which is traffic. Mm. And if that's one of the other things we want to attack, having making sure that every place here, one of the things they'll advertise is this walking distance. And that's a, a car's in downtown district. We don't need to deal with it. Yeah, I think for me, that issue is like but, but so like in dense areas it's probably not <clears throat> desirable to have these things right next to people who are trying to have some peace in their lives uh and then i then when you have them in very more rural areas then you're increasing traffic and you're also going to be increasing sprawl because you're going to see either new development in these places, because it'll definitely be worth it to put up a, a house specifically for this, if that's the only place in Groton that you can do it. And then, and then you're creating a, another problem, which is traffic and non-walkability. I don't know. I mean, certainly I the, demand, the demand is just, for walkability within you know, if you look at if you look at where they are today, the highest concentration is around Mystic, and in terms of people who are attracted to these uh, types of facilities, uh, most are very interested in being in a place where they can walk to shops and restaurants and so forth. I just look at our like I think of our map in that area, and like whose house am I going to put it next to? You know, and so like I try to think of those every I mean, Groton is very dense all around Mystic. There's little neighborhoods. They might not be formal or, you know, uh, you know, the perfect subdivision. But I don't know. Where do you put them? I, it's hard. hard to know. Like, what's the spread in, say, in, in Newport? Newport, I decided next year, my or is going to get married, we'll find a house overnight. It's easy to find a house in Newport. But there seem to be all over town. I haven't really tracked it. Do we, do we know, are they all based on walkability too? Or is it just a house that people are looking for? Well, a lot of Newport is walkable. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very dense community um, compared to Groton. Uh, and of course, Newport recently changed its regulations so that um, short-term rentals are only allowed in mixed-use and commercial areas and not in residential areas anymore. Uh, but yeah, certainly you used to be able to find them either walking distance to a commercial area, walking, uh, walking distance to uh, a beach. Um, and as someone earlier mentioned, uh, there are a number of people who come because they're traveling with family or children. Um, and want to uh, have that kind of space together that you can't get in a hotel. So sometimes, even if it's not walkable to those things, it's the, the size of the property um, that, that attracts families or people who are 
you know, coming for, uh, I said weddings, uh, not, not the wedding is held at the Airbnb, but uh, that, you know, uh, they're traveling to be with family for a particular event or traveling for work and want to be in the same place for a while. Um, so you really do see a wide variety of people who are attracted to these uses. I think for me, it seems like the mixed use uh, and commercial areas could be acceptable. I think I have a hard time imagining a residential house that's already a resident residential use. Uh, how how it works un, unless there was like some really uh, enforceable and uh, good good uh, conditions that would limit that use to something that would be as close to residential as we could make it. I, I would start with saying that mixed use and commercial. I mean. Seems like a, like a sure. appropriate fit. I I know that I have the Newport thing somewhere. I've never seen it. Maybe I should reread that. Well, in residential districts, it's tough. I think that if we pick residential and then we start singling out streets, every single person that we pick is. I don't even think it's by street. I think it's actually very specific. And I just think about it, just think how far you can go with um, coming out of Mystic, where right across from Mystic Pizza, the house that is now the office of. Whoever the, it's a contractor. Vance. 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 Oh, okay. Vance. 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 Originally, they built that to be a house. They wanted to sell it as a house. <laughs> and then they decided no longer. And made it commercial. Let's just, let's just make it commercial. And that makes perfect sense. Because who the heck would want to live there except for maybe as a short term rental? And as you go up the street, you think, well, who wants to live in these houses right there, especially the one that's right behind the memorial, <laughs> where there was one that, not really. It's so much traffic, so much going on. But there's one that was just redone, just behind the memorial as you go up the hill. Oh, yeah. And which house? Well, not the witch house, but the one in front of it. Yeah. It used to be uh, Ed Sullivan's house. Not, not the TV guy, but Justice of the Peace. And they redid the house beautifully. And it's there's a street in the front and a street in the back and people parking all over the place. And frankly, it's not a great place to live, and it's certainly not in the neighborhood. It's across the library and it's across from Route One. Okay, we don't want to stop that from being short-term rental. It's probably better as a short-term rental. And as you say, the witch house, the house behind it, which I don't know, year twenty of it trying to get finished, but that's, oh, that's Gretchen. That's Gretchen. That's why I meant Gretchen. The witch house is the yellow, the yellow house with the witch. Shutters. Ah, oh, okay. That's Excuse really me. a very small house. Okay, I'm talking about the enormous, enormous, the enormous house that looks like he's going to complete it. It looks like it's going to be an enormous Gretchen's house. house. Gretchen's old house. And that's a perfectly appropriate house. It doesn't bother anybody's neighborhood. It's like on one side, there's no neighbors. And on the other side of the street is the library. Fine. It's a perfectly good place that won't bother anybody. I want it to be a hotel, not particularly, just a short-term rental with all the cars parking on its lot. Sure, why not? Well, but when you look at the zoning, I, I think I think I, I think uh, I have a hard time because I know what's ha I'm, having lived in this town for 25 <laughs> years and seen how Mystic has grown and developed, and like I won't, I can't even, I I know better than to even go through downtown mystic anymore and so for me personally telling someone who lives there and this is their home and they've lived there their whole life that i'm gonna make your life worse is is uh is a hard uh place for me to go yeah. you know that we've given up on you and given up on your your home you know or what what you've invested in that this town is and and not even give i don't know why it's just that you know we it's the death by a thousand cuts you know it's just well, one more i think if we did what you want alice would that say you can't have short-term rental unless you get a special permit and have some pretty strict criteria for a special permit because you can't 
where you find them, you can't map them out. But I think that well, you the two things, right? but, but, but maybe, maybe, maybe just the criteria we're doing. I think Wretch's house was originally, I think it was rented out way back when. Probably. You know, or rooms, I think it might have been rented out. You know, and it's pretty nice. In that case, whoever lives next to that, the lives have always been terrible. So it's well, there isn't any book. There's houses on either side. Houses all over the house. There's a house right at the triangle. Yeah, that no, was, yeah, the house right at the triangle is that's that, redone. That was the one redone. Yeah. And that was that's the one that short term. And I'm saying it's not in the neighborhood. That was one that didn't bother anybody that in fact. Well, does it bother anybody now? Because it's it's already, it's already, <laughs> it's going to be a short term. It is a short term, right? So that's it, what it, I think. Absolutely oh. already. A clear, might as well have a neon sign on <laughs> it's, it's a short term right. It's difficult to follow you, though, because I don't know all the things you're talking about. And I can't really visualize. Yeah, and we're focusing on just and one little think, street. I don't know what people we're, want to hear when thinking about doing something next to a house. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's why. But it, that's why it'd be good. I think you'd have to use. Criteria short term special purpose. So what can what can we provide you all that will help to to move it forward? Would, would some specific criteria for consideration be helpful? So what I am hearing is that there seems to be a general comfort level with allowing these in commercial and mixed use zones. Uh, and there's this additional conversation about potentially allowing them on uh, major corridors outside those zones if they meet certain criteria. Uh, the largest one seeming to be that they do not abut um, a residential property within a neighborhood or subdivision. Is that generally a correct assessment of what we've been hearing? I think so. Uh, it'd be good to really look at the mixed use that we're talking about, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of those are pretty residential. I'm sorry, Stu, I couldn't understand what you said. Sorry. Um, it'd be good to look at the mixed use zones that we might um, be under consideration because a lot of those are very much residential. I mean, some mixed MX zones are like more commercial than others, but we ought to really look at what is it, where is it this way or that way. Let's see if anything makes sense. And um, a related question, and again, this is something that maybe you could get away with regulating and zoning. I'm not sure your your uh, solicitor has suggested to us that uh, he would not be comfortable uh, with this, and certainly we would prefer it be regulated in uh, uh, the general ordinance. But what is your feeling about owner occupied? Uh, so if someone has a room that they're renting in their house or a, a space over their garage, um, and yeah, they're in a residential community, but they're on site the whole time, does that change things for anyone here, or do you have the same concerns? I think for me, that would that would more comfortable with that. Yeah, that would make it more comfortable in these places other than mixed use and commercial. Mm -hmm. Then I think you would need a special permit really for that. So they have certain criteria because they're still going to need parking. Of course. Right? So we will have some things in there. Yeah, that would that would help my comfort level. Residential areas. You could, if you could do something that could be done. Well, that's probably something we've been living with forever. It's having pretty much attention to. Well, you're still going to have the neighborhood park there. So a little bit, except because that, you got people there. For you're living in. In someone else's house, for the most part. So you still have your yeah, neighbor, part and they've the got someone going part of the house. Part of the house. Maybe upstairs, maybe in the back. Um, this is a question for staff. Can there be design standards that can be like, oh, so we're talking about, I mean, when, so this is my, how I imagine these things, right? They were residential houses. But suppose, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to imagine if you allowed these things in commercial area. Say along Route 184 as a softening mechanism to the heavy and commercial use that's there, kind of to make it more of a place where it might 
appear to be a little more residential rather than our commercial area. Can you have, can we have design standards for these things? Because if we allow them in commercial area, could someone take uh, the uh, United Bank on Route 12 and turn it into a short-term rent? Well, I guess the other question is, could they take the United Bank and turn it into a hotel now? And the answer is yes. So I think some of this, we have to remember that we want to have certain standards that people feel comfortable with. But there's also going to be things that are dictated by the market. Because if you plop a short-term rental down, you didn't say you want to allow them in industrial zone. Like, oh, we'll allow them in industrial zone. And you put it right next to a working gravel bank. And well, people probably, have, they'll get a few negative reviews. That's not going to be a short-term rental. So I, I think we also need to just approach it with what else works or what will logically work because otherwise people can say, I'd rather stay in a hotel and that won't be a successful venture. Um, can we have- right, And I will say, John, if I can jump in before I, before I lose this thought, like I don't know of a single instance where someone has built a building with the express purpose of it being a short-term rental. Like I don't oh, wow. know that that has ever happened. <laughs> Um, so that's generally not something that we're seeing in, in the market. This is generally, um, where you have an existing home or, uh, uh, you know, apartment, um, or, you know, someone has an ac accessory building on their, on their property that they want to convert. Um, but I'm, I'm not aware of anyone who has expressly bought a parcel of land, developed a building on it with the express purpose of turning it into a short-term rental. Not that you couldn't, it's just not something that really happens. Right. But I do think, I mean, I think that certainly accessory apartments, which have some design standards, you know, some folks may build those for short-term rental purposes. And I just want to note that duplexes also have some design standards. Right. Both yeah, of those. No, that's yeah. it. I mean, th those are the kinds of things that for me could make them a little, you know, uh, a softer use uh, visually. And then, I don't know what, anyway. There you go. So this is all really good feedback. So it kind of to dive a little bit deeper. I think we got a, a consensus or the idea of Jeff's question that if things, if units were owner occupied, short term rentals, the commission would be open to those. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but across the residential spectrum with performance standards and possibly also a special permit. So is it just performance standards or is it a special permit and performance standards? I don't know if, I don't know if I'm uh, like 100% with when you said <laughs> residential zone. So like every residential zone, probably not. There are some that are more you know, the ones that have really small lots, maybe if it was owner occupied. Well, that's why I think Jeff should put together some of this in writing, and then we can look at it and say, where do we want to make the modifications? We yeah. don't spend a lot of time with the details in it. And then we can look at it and say, this is what we're talking about. No, and that's it's why I want to get easier some... to make decisions, something that's hard yeah. or firmed up. So maybe, you know, maybe we could draft, Jeff could draft that up with, you know, indicating special permits, yeah. indicating um, some of the performance standards. Because again, we want to get as much from well, you. It's a start. Yeah, I think you have to get started with it and go through it. And then you adjust it when you get more input or see how it ties into the whole thing. Yeah, I'm hearing from almost everyone mentioned support for a special permit. Uh, so I will assume that in our first draft. Uh, obviously, we will incorporate off-street parking standards and noise and nuisance standards uh, to the greatest extent that we think we can. Um, I do still think there are going to be uh, issues that, um, I mean, for example, the uh, owner occupancy uh, standard uh, that we'll have to just continue to lobby the um, town council to include in the short-term rental ordinance, uh, but that is something that we can explore uh, trying to incorporate into zoning, see if it flies. Uh, but of course, we want to make sure that that's your, your town council is 
uh, council is comfortable with that. Um, and we will explore uh, this issue of uh, walk sheds um, and potentially uh, what that would look like for um, allowing this on, on more major streets outside the mixed use and, and commercial centers. Uh, so at least this gives us something to start with. Um, and, you know, we'll consider how this plays with the proposed uh, structure rental ordinance that the town council is considering. Um, obviously, we only have about 15 minutes left of this session, but I want to use it how this body uh, thinks would be most productive. Um, are there other things related to short term rental that you want to discuss tonight or can we uh, take a few minutes to uh, talk about cannabis and uh, data centers. And I will say um, two, two decisions we would hope to come to tonight. Uh, we wanted to see uh, how you feel about uh, flat out prohibiting uh, versus again, allowing with conditions, um, cannabis and uh, adult cannabis use and um, data centers. Uh, so I know we would, we would love to at least get that direction like we did for short term rentals last month. I don't know if we can do both. I think we can just pick one, which is the best one to think. Is probably yeah. want to do cannabis? Okay. Cannabis? Yes. All right. So you all received, of course, in advance uh, a number of questions related to uh, regulation of cannabis. Um, before we dive into that, uh, we could do some research into um, Sue had some issues around or had questions around uh, the potency and dosage for uh, cannabis and how the state regulates that. And I just wanted to share that uh, Connecticut has established THC concentration cap, concentration caps on adult use cannabis. Um, so <laughs> cannabis plant materials are not to exceed 30% THC. Uh, other cannabis products uh, for example, concentrates shall not exceed 60% THC, and uh, those caps do not apply to pre-filled cartridges or to the sale of medical marijuana products between establishments and qualified patients and caregivers, uh, so that non-retail uh, sort of environment. Um, the possession and use of up to one and a half ounces of cannabis or its equivalent is legal, and residents may also store up to five ounces in a locked container at home or transport it in a locked glove box or trunk. Uh, so we did want to at least do a, a little bit of our homework and uh, let you know that the state is regulating the uh, potency and dosage that is allowed to be sold in, in the state. I'd say 60%, is that really regulating? <clears throat> That's really allowing an incredibly high percentage. I mean, that kind of blows my mind. Sorry, that's like a term. <laughs> 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 Maybe some analogy to use with it is we regulate whether a liquor store is selling only wine coolers right. or Everclear. <laughs> right. I, I thought of that, but it's hard. It is a problem. And I have my notes in here somewhere on the left because this issue just keeps bothering me. I'm sorry. To because it's like with a liquor store, okay, we all know the problems with that because I go to teenager parties downstairs and that sort of thing. And yes, sometimes they drink too much and all this, and some of them drink a lot more than others. But with this drug, which is so addictive and damaging, and their IQ has changed, and these other things like that, I think that we're really talking about a different animal. That's why I understand it. Yeah, you have to be over 21 after this, but guess what? Your parents can get 60%, you know, and I don't know how the kids are getting it. I cannot find any great direction on that. I don't know anyone that would know, but it's um, somehow it's really um, very widespread for my understanding. And it's extremely open. If you think you're really losing a lot of uh, younger people um, to be able to do their potential in life. I think that's a huge fault in the mm -hmm. country. Um, maybe someday they'll realize it's a tragedy. 
in the state saying, oh, 60%, that's a max. Is that something we can deal with here? If we could completely ban it in Groton, what effect would that have if they can just send their big brother across the, across the road to New London and get some. And, right. and so I think it would be zero effect. Well, well, have the right. opposite effect because it's a challenge. Um, well, I, well, I know because yeah. it's a little it's less traceable, a little less. Well, I think it's, it's, and the state is just basically saying you can have as many establishments as you want. Yeah, right? so something just happened in the that. last day or two, didn't yeah, I read that? That's right. Well, so that it is a day or two. <laughs> no, well, I mean, it was in the paper this morning, I thought, or yesterday, that they said that there's no limit now. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's uh, uh, publication. Oh, okay. yes. oh, it was in the was worksheet. In that's what I read. It. Good, thanks. Yeah. yeah, so in brief, there had been a rule that said any community of uh, 25,000 or more could only have one such establishment, basically one, one establishment for 25,000 people. And that was set to uh, sunset in 2024, uh, but the legislature apparently felt they were getting so much demand that they uh, lifted that two years early. Uh, so right, currently the state does not set a density limit on the number of establishments. So what does that mean for us? I mean, do, can we regulate how many there are or distances from one place to another? We can regulate distances. Can we See, regulate what roads? The main highway. I don't think you want to put them. Well, I think you can. Places. You can regulate it based on it's zoning districts. Commercial, right. so, commercial districts. I, mean, I don't know if anybody's driven by any of these in other states yet. Um, Besides Recently, I've driven by a couple in Massachusetts, and they're on a road no different than what you would see along our Route 1, or sometimes in walkable centers. You see them, and there's not a line out the door. It's almost it's similar to a liquor store or a uh, head shop, you know, like we've had in town. It's, it's that type of a, a presence, at least for the retail operation what you're seeing for the grow operations it's, it's different i think there's one that i drive by every day on my commute that looks just like greenhouses you don't know what's in there but everybody knows what's in there um, so it, it, again you know what is it that you're trying to prevent what's the goal or where do you want to allow or concentrate your the, the distance i think from uh, like a lot of times you see I think of the hoteling's principle, right? Businesses want to congregate together so that you create a restaurant district, right? So is do we want that? Because that's what you know typically they want to do. Is that's why you see McDonald's next to Burger King next to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, so can we just can we regulate in such a way that we just crowd it out so they just couldn't? Well, I mean, I could because I can see what happened in the be. head shop, of which we have a smoke shop in town. I wouldn't want to see that strip for an entire block and a half be one different than a package store. I mean, it, <laughs> no, I mean, as far as you don't put another one package one next store to, next to another, another because they want. No, but we don't regulate that, do we? We don't need to because they don't do it. That's what I'm saying. We can keep it away from schools, right? Which is probably a good idea. Oh, okay. I, I think from my point of view at this time, I would rather see us move conservatively and then uh, with the option to open it up. But I don't see why it wouldn't be treated differently than alcohol in a lot of ways. Well, I don't think it would. Think. So what does treating this conservatively mean for you? Well, I, I think that if we... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't say that very often. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I do uh, want to at least, with the little time we have left, I do want to at least pull yeah. the room. How many people feel that uh, the town the should? Distances are probably, I mean, I'm just speaking for me. Okay. I, I, yeah, sorry. See, Barbara. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you. I was just going to say uh, sort of three things. How many people feel that uh, cannabis should be prohibited? Uh, in the town, uh, how many feel that, um, and not that you have much control over this, but that this uh, should be a referendum, uh, that you know that that's an option for communities that uh, ten percent of the population could uh, request a, a referendum, or three, 
Uh, are you comfortable allowing them with conditions in, in certain locations? How are people feeling at this moment? This is a commercial, uh, this is the commercial sale. We're talking about. Not cool. Not cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about all the, all the different uses. So, uh, you know, back in the fall, you had oh, gone through and initially said, yeah, we'd be comfortable with all these different uses in these districts. So you've had that conversation, uh, but staff wanted us to take a step back and given the additional uh, information that you've received and conversation that we've heard from you, we just want to take your pulse again and say, you know, are people still comfortable uh, allowing these in, in certain districts with conditions uh, or is there anyone who feels like these, these issues should all be prohibited? Why don't we talk? To, yeah, dispensing. You know, why don't we go around the table? Okay, so, yeah, um, I don't think it should or can be prohibited. So, so I'll say no. I don't, I'm okay with it not to be prohibited, and certainly permitted with conditions, really severe ones, which might also be have to be comparable with liquor sales, which I think we should probably look at the conditions for that at the exact same time. It just occurred to me that we have a liquor store directly in front of Gloucester. Yeah. How did we ever do that? <laughs> right now we don't. Now we don't. We don't. Now we don't. I know. We got rid of the school park, oh, but now it's a park. So it's well, some of these things, like ours for package stores, are controlled by the state. We want to use, I think we might want to use the same hours. Probably. Same I mean, which would be a zoning thing rather than a state. Right. We end up with. Let's compare it head to head with the liquor. Well, where the liquor gets it by a state definition, we may want to have the authority. Interesting. Oh, uh, no, that's, I mean, uh, I would say alcohol is probably a good way, and maybe some distances initially. And uh, and I would also like to see some sort of a, a map that would show the location of the things that you might not want to. To have them near if it was huh? the town staff did provide that last month oh i didn't see it sorry if you want a paper copy it was the one before that all right I, i've been focusing on a, a lot of things lately and can't focus on everything so that's it um no no i don't do that stuff <laughs> but i'm okay <laughs> so that's it i think uh some distances and then um, and then comparable to alcohol. And if we can control the hour, hours of operation, that would probably be beneficial as well. And then this is gonna go to public hearing too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, like, I would also be sensitive about maybe places like the uh, military facility, the sub base, they might wanna be, you know, to know what's going on because I think that that's probably, I mean, given that it's at this point not allowable on a federal level, it might be something that- uh, It's actually not as big an issue just because the military still can make places fall. There are um, certain shops in town. Okay, the military but I, I would certainly uh, want to uh, have that consideration for them. I think I agree with both of you. Strict same as commercial areas are allowed. Commercial areas, and then they have distance from certain facilities and hours. And look at the look at what we were saying to the language teachers. Well, I don't want to specify here what the distances are, but probably just things like at least schools. Hmm? Okay. I say schools and and residential residential areas in general. Right. You want to be plus a distance from any of those. Areas. I think there's only certain uses you can set that separation. Well, what, yeah. Oh, well, right. Places of worship. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So they specified in those. Right. Yeah. The state law is very specific about what. What, what what uses you can have a setback from? The distance, we can pick a distance though? Yeah. We can pick a distance. I do exactly. it. Exactly, I know. That might do it because every residential area has a school or something and so we can just balance it that way. How do you um, do 
things like uh, if a church were to move in after one of these places is established, if you did pick that as a yeah, that's not can't make the business shut down. If the no. Church okay, right. no, I kind of figured that, but I just yeah, uh, they're just you know I guess they that would they would have that choice. What part would they want to move in? Was bothering. Or would it stop these people from speaking? You know, <laughs> yeah. getting on to agricultural use. Yeah, what about it should be in agricultural zones. Agricultural zones. Yes, we don't. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have those. Well, I'm afraid we're not going to do it. We're just going to do it. So, in the same zones, the agricultural uses are allowed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. is basically consistent with the. Yeah, decision uh, or the, the consensus that you came to uh, last fall. And it came, and they have to be inside. Why? Why do you want to let them outside? They got to be gated. Okay. 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 Whatever, those are conditions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I remember. People are going to walk off. Well, they might. That's, that's up to you. Yeah. Exactly. They don't think so. All right, well, the big question, thank you for answering that. We just wanted to confirm that you're all still comfortable moving forward with this uh, um, as an allowed use with conditions. Um, with your permission, I know we didn't go over all the questions that we'd asked you, uh, but I think we can at least get something in writing to start with for you to respond to. Um, as we suggested last month, uh, if you do have specific thoughts on any of the questions that we emailed you in advance uh, about cannabis, please feel free to uh, send your specific thoughts to Deb, who will compile them and, and send them to us. Uh, and we'll continue to consider those as we write a first draft. Um, but uh, very helpful to at least uh, confirm you are still interested in um, allowing with conditions in certain zoning districts. And then when can we have a follow-up session for the data centers? Can we establish a date now? Do we need a poll? We'll probably do a good poll again. Can we do a check their calendars? Yeah. Can we have that go out soon? Sure. Next week? Yeah. Let's look at their date first. Yeah. Uh, we can establish. The data center. What we'll do that time is we'll start with data centers and then we can, we, depending on what it is, we'll go yeah, first, we'll dive there. back into these. Yeah, yeah, if we have input, then we can yeah. get that back. Or we can get their input back without having a meeting and then. Uh, because it sounds like we have to get people focused. Well, it's 7 30, so I'll make that. Accept the motion for adjournment. Mm -hmm. We moved and seconded. We got more done than I thought. Yeah. So, uh, when I was asking about the churches, what I, I guess my uh, my idea is that when you have, say, we decide that you're going to do that, because there's sometimes 